Hey everybody, welcome back to class. Today we're going to be talking about interaural attenuation. In the last video in this educational series, we talked about the occlusion effect. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that video, go ahead and click the card linked up above and be sure to check that video out. So what is interaural attenuation? Let's break it down. Inter and aural, meaning between the ears, and attenuation, meaning a reduction in the sound level. So in its most basic form, interaural attenuation is how much the sound from one ear gets reduced when it's heard by the other ear. To get a better idea of how this looks, let's go into the class program. In the class program, here we can see that we have a test signal that's being presented at 60 dB HL. Looking over here at our masking tool, even though we have the masking turned down so low that you can't see it, this still helps us illustrate what's going on. So we have a signal in the test ear, which right now is our right ear. That test ear is hearing that signal at 60 dBHL, but the intensity of that sound is, is high enough that some of that sound will also be heard in the non-test ear. And in this case, the interaural attenuation between the right and the left ear is 40 dB. So a 60 dB sound heard in the right ear will also be heard in the non-test ear at a level of 20 dB. Now this level is specific to the type of transducer that you're using to present the sound. For example, supraoral earphones like these TDH50s have a smaller interaural attenuation estimate than other transducers like insert earphones. We can view this difference by changing our transducer and looking at our program settings to see that now the internal attenuation is 60. We'll save those settings and now we'll see that a 60 dB sound in the test ear is only heard at a level of 0 dB HL in the non-test ear. Or in other words, the interaural attenuation was increased or the reduction of the sound in the test ear being heard by the non-test ear is greater now. So if you want to be sure to exclude the non-test ear from your testing, it's better to use a transducer that has a larger interaural attenuation. That way you don't have to worry if the response from your participant is because they heard it in the test ear or the non-test ear. A great example of this is when you do bone conduction testing. In bone conduction testing, there is, it's often assumed that there is no interaural attenuation or that the interaural attenuation is very, very small. And so in this case, a 60 dB tone presented through bone conduction to the right ear is also assumed to be heard at 60 dB HL in the left ear. This leads to lots of issues and problems when doing bone conduction testing because we're not really sure which ear heard the sound. When this situation occurs, you would need to mask or cover up the non-test ear to make sure that you know which ear your patient is responding to. And we can show that in the class simulator too. We'll just raise up the level of the masker to show that if you put enough masking in, you'll be covering up the signal in the non-test ear to be sure that your patient response is only coming from the test ear. And I want to point out here that you'll notice that the masker is also presented through the same transducer. And so that masker has an interaural attenuation as well. So you see that a 70 dB HL masking stimulus is also heard by the test ear at 10 dB. Why 10 dB? Because the interaural attenuation for insert earphones in this case is 60 dB. So a 70 dB signal gets attenuated or reduced by 60 dB when it's heard in the opposite ear. Well, I think that sums up the basics of interaural attenuation. I hope this short video helps your understanding improve a little bit. If you wanna see more content like this, please like and subscribe to the video and we'll see you next time.